Well, you know, we keep arguing about what the Bears should do here in free agency. And I am of the belief that a guy like Orlando oh, Brown wow. Jr. is a an absolute gift if you can go out and pay him and get him. He's a four-time Pro Bowler. I'm not saying he's the best. He's, he's the best player in the league, but he's the best offensive lineman. He's the only real left tackle available in free agency. You got more money than anyone else. Improve your offensive line. I would make him a priority. I'd be sitting in front of his house trying to get this done, and it sounds like that might not be the way the Bears go. Yeah, well, um, I like Zeus. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Um, you know, he can uh, basically create his own solar eclipse uh, <laughs> with his size. Um, you, want, you actually want Zeus on your team because he basically starts every fight and he finishes every fight. He just brings that mentality and attitude uh, to the practice field and to the game field. <clears throat> you see him game day. <clears throat> Guy's got his game face on now. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't get him out of the zone that he's in. And so he wanted to be a left tackle. Uh, Baltimore wanted to pay him as a right tackle. Uh, he wanted to be a left tackle to kind of pay tribute to his father, uh, who was a great player in this league. And he's playing left tackle. And the one thing about Zeus, he lines up and plays every play. He doesn't get hurt, doesn't miss games, doesn't miss practices. But is he the best? No, he's not. And so you just got to gotta go, okay, but you got a mobile quarterback that you know can get out of harm's way when things don't go perfect for him out there on the edge because he's not the most athletic guy. But uh, I'm with you. Like, you had a chance to get Zeus. I'd put him in my lineup. And I like Braxton Jones, too. But I might find a different position for Braxton if, if you're able to land Zeus. Brian, two things. So do you have any insight into what he's looking for on his next team? And the second thing is we hear this kind of suggestion that there might not be the most ideal scheme for a guy like Orlando Brown Jr., to which we have responded to, change your scheme because you need him. <laughs> well, I remember I did a game this year for the national radio, Kansas City and Buffalo, and the Chiefs lost the game at home. And I get a call from Zeus, like probably an hour afterwards. I'm in the stadium just doing some work. So he calls me and he goes, what'd you think today? I go, well, you guys don't like to run the ball very much. And he goes, bingo. Like he wants to go someplace where you run the ball. Like you can just, that's his, that's his forte. Just leaning on people. That's what he wants to do. Now, look, you can't argue playing left tackle with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. You know, you got yourself a Super Bowl. But ultimately he wants to be in a, in a running offense. And that's kind of what Chicago looked like to me last year. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, I, I guess Mike McClinchy is the guy the Bears might prefer over him because they'd leave Braxton Jones on the left side. But again, he's he's not a bad player. I mean, he he had a decent rookie season. I wouldn't think that he set the league afire, and I think you have to be aware of how you're going to help him and support him. Uh, but they love that style of offensive lineman. Now, to me, McClinchy, I mean, he's a giant guy, and I'm not dissing him in any way, but. I think that if you can have an above-average player versus an average-type player, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't go for the, the creme de la creme. Well, I mean, I, I like Mike McGlinchey. Uh He's played some good football in this league. He's had some injuries. I like Jawan Taylor better. Mm. I like Isaac Sayamalo even more. Um, people don't want to pay guards, but Jacksonville paid Brandon Sheriff last year, and that offense line looked a whole lot better and a whole lot different this year. Uh, protecting that number one pick. I mean, Isaac Samalo to me is the best offensive lineman in this whole free agent class. Like nobody really talks about him because he's in Philadelphia and he got all these other great players around him. But that guy had an unbelievable season last year. He could do anything you want at, at, at guard, and he actually can play any position. He can play center, guard, tackle. He's played them all. But Juwan Taylor and Isaac Samalo are two guys I would definitely take a look at. I think both those guys are really good players. Ryan, what do you think about the way Ryan Poles has been so forthcoming about drafting first overall and having three teams that he says he's talked to about a deal and that he's confident that he could get at least a first-round pick in 2024 and a first-round pick in 2025 if and when he makes that trade? Well, I mean, he's, he definitely has a for sale sign in his yard. Um, and so, now, do I want to put all that out there? Probably not. I mean, it's, but there's going to be a bidding war for the first pick. I mean, he's in a great spot, whether he says anything about it or not. The fact is, is that those quarterbacks that we saw work out last Sunday in Indianapolis, they're all going in the top 10. 
So there's going to be tremendous interest. And, you know, it's just like you saw what Chicago gave up with San Francisco to, to draft Mitch Trubisky to move up one spot. And, you know, they're still kind of scratching their head on that in Chicago and everywhere else, you know. But, you know, I mean, if you want – if let's just say uh, Houston covets – C.J. Stroud is their quarterback in the future. Well, all right. I mean, they might go to number one just to make sure that he gets him. Uh, you know, but ultimately, you'd probably love to see Carolina not what we want C.J. Stroud, we want Bryce Young, whoever, and we want to go all the way to number one. I mean, he's going to get his two number ones for sure and, and a, probably a boatload more if he moves back to nine. So he's going to have an opportunity to move once and maybe twice in this draft, and it's a perfect storm with these quarterbacks all getting pushed up, all needy teams needing quarterbacks. We all can identify who they are, and they're probably going to go through the draft to do it. So I think Ryan's in, in the – because there's a lot of years where nobody wants the number one pick, and that's not the case this year. So I think he's in a good spot. Ryan, you know, he's talked about maybe doing it before free agency. In other words, he might want to trade the pick before – see, I, I'm of the belief that you wait and you see – you just have to make sure you trade at the moment the pick is at its highest value, if that makes any sense. Well, I think there's there's truth to that. Um, I think, you know, I, I guess if you do it before free agency, then it forces teams to make a decision to trade now and basically forego free agency. You know, there's Jimmy Garoppolo out there. There's Aaron Rodgers out there. They may take one of those spots away of one of those four quarterbacks. And maybe it does lessen the interest if one of those spots are taken, let's say, by Carolina. Let's say Jimmy Garoppolo in Carolina is a deal. I don't know, without knowing, I don't know. Or Las Vegas. You know, teams that look like they're going to draft a rookie quarterback, but if Garoppolo or Aaron Rodgers is available, maybe it takes one of those spots away and it lessens the competition for that number one spot. So maybe that's how he's kind of thinking. Um you know, we may know a little bit more here. For agency starts next Wednesday. We know, may know a little bit more here this week with Aaron Rodgers. That might help a little bit, kind of clear the picture up. 